So I didn't know that much about radio astronomy before I started doing things in grad school. Um, I was sort of drawn to the research area of pulsars more, and pulsars just happened to be um, bright in the radio, as well as in gamma rays and x-rays. We operate pretty much 24-7 year-round, with the exception of one to two maintenance days during the week, where we just do repairs on the telescope, preventative maintenance, and changing out different instruments. We actually have so many different instruments that we can put on the telescope and not enough space for it on the telescope itself. But during summer, we go into a maintenance period that lasts Monday through Thursday. A lot of time is spent painting the telescope because it hasn't actually been painted over a second time since it was originally constructed. There's just so much surface area that it takes years to fully repaint the telescope. Uh, but it's something important that you have to do to protect the, the steel structure, to prevent corrosion and rust. Again, re more repair work on the active surface, which sort of controls the shape of the telescope, um, the track that the whole thing moves on, um, and a lot of that other stuff that we can't do during the year because it requires an extended period um, where the telescope's not observing and moving around and pointing at different objects. Uh, you wouldn't want to do that when people are hanging off the telescope painting. Radio emission that comes from space, from astronomical objects, is incredibly, incredibly weak. We typically measure the power that we collect in a unit called Janskys, which is a zero, a decimal point, and then 25 uh, zeros, and then one after that. And that's measured in, that's compared to watts. So it's insanely, insanely weak power. Um, so you think about the energy output by um, you know, a light bulb or a radio station. Um, it's just really, really powerful compared to the, to the sources that we're trying to detect. So the telescope is located in something called the National Radio Quiet Zone. Any kind of fixed transmitter has to be specially licensed and to work with the observatory so that um, it doesn't uh, harm our operations. Then the very immediate area around the telescope itself is where you have the strictest, strictest controls. So here on site, there are no wireless communications of any kind. So no Bluetooth, no wireless internet, no 4G coverage or anything like that. We're not allowed to take digital electronics down to the telescope because all of those things, even spark plugs in your car, will create interference um, that would just really uh, limit the, uh, the usefulness of the telescope. The, the thing that I probably miss the most is being able to use a microwave. And we do have some microwaves on site, but they have to be in these big shielded boxes to prevent any of the, uh, the microwave uh, emissions from interfering with the telescope. Um, but you know, no one else here has a cell phone. No one else here has Wi-Fi. So you know, it's the way people lived all the way back 15 years ago. <laughs> Our role um, as scientists here that work for the observatory and Breakthrough Listen is to basically provide the support that the Breakthrough Listen project needs to make the most out of uh, Green Bank Telescope for their project. You know, it's, it's a high risk, high reward type of science. If Breakthrough Listen is really successful in detecting a signal from extraterrestrial intelligence, that's one of the most monumental discoveries that will have ever been made in the history of, of humanity.